Are gimbals overpriced selfie sticks, or do they actually serve a purpose? Hi, I'm Ryan, and welcome to Addictions. Two years ago, to this very day, I actually bought myself this gimbal. And I thought to myself, you know what? I'm gonna be able to now film the best videos ever. And if I can recall, I think I've only probably used it about four times. Other than that, it was locked away, thrown in the back of my cupboard. Ever since then, I just resorted to using my cell phone. And I relied solely on its stabilization to be able to give me some decent footage. A couple of days ago, I stumbled upon my gimbal again. The gimbal in question is the Zion Smooth Q. Now, I'm not sure if you're familiar with gimbals, you might be more familiar with the Osmobile range from DJI. Well, this is its competitor. What I was curious to see is, is there still a need for a gimbal? Considering that cell phones have gimbal-like stabilization these days. So you don't need to be interested in videography or filming a short documentary or doing some epic cinematic footage to understand. So please bear with me. I would just like to include two videos, side by side, to show you the difference between gimbal footage and regular cell phone footage. Comment below to let me know which one you think is, camera A or camera B. When comparing the two, you will see that the one has a slight difference. This is because the gimbal is actually stabilizing my footage a little bit better than my arm scan. The tiny motors, of course, ironing out any jitters in my arms and in my body movement in order to make the footage look as stable as it is. Let's do a small walking test. What do you think of the two, A or B? Of course, when I walk without the gimbal, you will notice also there's a bit of a shake. Now let's up the pace. Let's do a small jog. And immediately you will see that the one with the gimbal is a little bit more stabilized. So this of course makes it a lot easier to try and film someone while running using a gimbal to keep your footage nice and clean. Gimbals on the whole have advanced quite well over the years. Granted, this one is of course two years old, so it lacks the latest features. But what it allows you to do is, directly from the, from the gimbal itself, you will notice there's a record button, a mode button, to toggle between the zooming as well as a joystick to move the head. So this gives you access to control your phone's features directly from the gimbal, making it a lot easier. However, please understand that that is of course only done through the ZY Play app, which is Zion's own app. Other cool features that the gimbal allows you to do is of course motion time lapse. Also, you have the ability to charge your phone directly through the gimbal. That's of course through the USB port that's located at the back. Be in mind that that battery on the gimbal is substantially smaller and it's not going to charge your phone as quickly. So it's just for a run and gun, plug your phone in just to be able to get that quick shot. Furthermore, the new ones are a lot more portable. That is one of the major drawbacks that I had regarding the gimbal itself because it's that extra case as well as the extra pain of setting it up just to record a video. So that made it a bit of a pain to carry around. With that said, cell phones have also improved drastically over the years. Some of them have features such as EIS, which is electronic image stabilization, and OIS, which is optical image stabilization, which are now built into most phones to allow you to get stable footage. Be in mind that not all phones have this feature, however some phones have either one or the other or of course use a combination of both. But also understand that too has its limitations. When I think back to the reasons I stopped using the gimbal, it was due to the extra space and extra, as you can see this bag is not small at all. To be able to set up it takes a couple of minutes longer and of course the app that it uses, I'll actually show you a clip. And you can see the difference between video A and video B. Video A, you will notice that it is a substantial drop in quality when comparing it to the native camera app. Then also, you have other issues such as having to charge the gimbal. Now, don't get me wrong. These tiny motorized devices do serve a good purpose. The gimbal in most instances will of course assist you in getting a nice smooth cinematic shot first time around. It also gives you the ability to be able to catch certain angles that you normally wouldn't be able to capture with your phone handheld. Also, if you're a person that of course makes use of your phone for vlogging, a gimbal will help you of course stabilize your footage, make it look a lot more professional. As you can see, I'm able to of course move the gimbal forward and back, 
and of course keep it focused on my face without making it look you know very shaky and unprofessional and move it around quite easily while you're of course filming yourself so if you can incorporate this into your workflow it helps a lot what i'm getting at is it all depends on your usage and the purpose for your wanting a gimbal if you feel that it'll of course improve what you're doing in the sense that if you're going to be using it for vlogging and need to stabilize your footage it's a big plus also if you don't have the ability to use aftermarket software in order to stabilize your footage it might also be a good option so let me know in the comments below if you are considering a gimbal what gimbal you're considering as well and if you need any help hit me up and i'll be more than happy to assist you in helping you decide what would be best until next time take care